Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I wanted to make a video about some new nodes I made for my geometry node assets. The last couple of weeks I made several videos with some thoughts about getting started in geometry nodes, and in doing that I've explained a number of different concepts, and, and while explaining some of those things I wanted to have a way that I could um, visually show what I was talking about on some geometry. Um, and so in the process of making those videos I ended up making a number of node groups to just visualize things essentially. And I thought those nodes could actually be pretty useful for just sort of debugging things in your geometry node setup. A lot of times in the past I've been working on some node setup and there's something that's not working right. I can't quite figure out what part is broken. So I'll end up building like this whole setup just to test and see. Um, oftentimes just like a set position node and I plug some vector into it with a scale vector math on it. To be able to see like how that vector moves something and if the vector is going where I thought it was supposed to be going or whatever. Because by default, there's not a great way just to visualize what that vector is doing. You can see it as a color with the viewer node, but that's not always the most helpful. So I've come up with these five new nodes, and let's just go through them one by one. So the first node is one I've actually had around for quite a while, but it never felt like it fit with any of the other nodes, so I never added it. And that's this int to color node. And the whole idea behind it is, if you've ever tried to plug a, an index or some integer value into a viewer node, it doesn't really show you a whole lot that's useful. The first thing will be black and everything else will just turn white because it goes beyond the 0 to 1 range that the viewer node accepts. And you can kind of fix that by multiplying the index by some small number, which turns some of the faces gray. But it's kind of a pain to set it up, and it really doesn't tell you that much. The into color doesn't do a whole lot more than that, but it will at least show you which faces have different values, in this case, um, by putting a different color on those faces. And then the way that works is by varying the hue in a loop, and every 20 integers it will loop back to the first hue. So you can, And you can adjust that to get more or less variation between consecutive numbers. Another thing to mention real quickly is that these nodes are intended to be dragged into some node group that you're working on to do some tests or to visualize something, um, and then probably deleted before you're done. That's kind of how I intended them to be used, but obviously you can use them however you want. Um, the first one is debug draw point. What it will do is for whatever input geometry you give it, and then whatever mode you set it in, so zero is vertex, one is edge, and two is faces, it will draw a point on every single one of that element in the input geometry. So, and you can make a selection if you want it to be only drawn on part of the mesh, you can do that. You can also isolate the points so you don't draw the original geometry, you only draw the points that you added. And then um, you can change the radius. If the color is completely black, it will pick a color using the integer to color node we looked at first based on the index of the element that's being displayed on. But you can also pick some other color. Um, if it's any color other than black, it will draw that color. Then finally, the last socket to look at is the origin socket. That's the position where the point will be drawn. By default, if there's nothing plugged into that socket, it will be the position of the element that it belongs to. But if you make some other vector, you can have it drawn at that position instead. So here we're drawing it at the position plus the normal. And if we wanted to scale the normal, we could move it closer or further away to the mesh. The second node is debug draw line. It has all the same options as the point node. You can have a selection, you can change the mode between vertex edge and face, you can isolate the result or merge it with the input geometry, you can change the radius of the edge, and then you can pick a color. If you want to choose some color, you can do that. The only difference is that the draw line node has a start and an end vector instead of the origin vector. And the start and the end are points A and B of the line. So you could, for example, if you're in edge mode, plug position 1 and position 2 into the start and end vectors from the edge vertices and draw like a wireframe. Once again, those vectors can be whatever you want. By default, they are the position and a little bit of an upwards vector. The third node is debug draw arrow, and it works just like the point and line node, but it draws an arrow. Um, it has the same options, selection, uh, the mode, vertex, edge, and face. You can isolate it. You can normalize the length of the direction that you input. You can scale how long it is. You can change the radius of it, and you can pick a color for the arrows. By default, the origin is the position of whatever element it's being drawn on, and the direction is the normal. If you want to instead draw some other vector, you can do that. For example, we can draw the cross product here with up, 
So you can plug whatever sort of vector you want into either of those sockets. There's another node which I left in here, but I removed, I unmarked it as an asset. That's this highlight index node. It um, let you pick an index and it would highlight it. I decided that was less useful after adding this node, which is the debug print values node. What it will do is um, let you pick some value, whatever value you want, and it will draw that value on every single element in the mesh. And that value doesn't have to be a constant value. You can draw the index of the, the vertices in this case, or the faces here. Or we could draw the, uh, the length of the position to know like how far away from the center it is. And we could choose to draw it as a float, which I only have it um, accurate to one decimal place because I didn't want the numbers to get too big. So it can either draw an integer or it can draw the tenths place. If you really want to know what the hundredths place is, um, you could multiply the number by 10, I guess. But um, yeah, that's what it does for now. You can scale how big the numbers are. Um, the offset vector allows you to align the numbers differently. So one way you might want to do that is aligning them to the normal, which will have all the numbers aligned to the face they're on. Or you could put whatever vector you wanted in there. If you wanted them to be sideways, you could add a vector and choose X instead of Z. Now they're all pointing this way. And then the offset scale pushes them in that direction some amount if you want to. You can also color them same as everything else. So those are my new debug nodes that I've added to my geometry node collection. Um, obviously too, they're just geometry. You can join them together if you want to have multiple things visualized at once. So if you want to visualize multiple things at once, you can do all of that. I've added these nodes to my geometry node assets over on Gumroad. I've also decided to start charging for my geometry node assets. I've said in many of the videos in the past that my geometry node assets are available for free. So to sort of honor that, I have made the original set of 49 assets as the free version. If you want to get that for free and try them out, that's still available. But I've made a new version of the assets that's the complete collection, and any future nodes that I add to it will be in there. And I currently have that price at $5 or more. Anyone who previously purchased and paid money for my geometry node assets should have access to the complete collection. Other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.